Insulin is a peptide hormone that is produced by specialized cells known as beta cells found in the islets of Langerhans of our pancreas. Now, insulin is basically released when we have a high concentration of glucose inside our blood plasma. And what insulin basically does is it decreases the concentration of glucose inside the blood plasma back to a normal value of about 100 milligrams per deciliter. So that is the normal concentration of glucose inside our blood. So what insulin does is it ultimately maintains and regulates a healthy concentration of glucose inside our blood plasma. Now, what exactly is the mechanism by which our insulin actually controls our glucose? Well, basically, under normal conditions, what the insulin does is because it's a peptide hormone, that means it binds onto the membrane of target cells. So the receptor proteins for insulin are, are found on the plasma membrane of target cells, such as liver cells, or muscle cells. And once our insulin actually binds onto the membrane, it makes the membrane more permeable to glucose. And that means glucose can now travel from the blood plasma and into the cytoplasm of the cell. And once inside the cell, the cell uses our glucose to basically store glucose in the form of glycogen. So inside the cell, the glucose is transformed into glycogen, which is a polymer of glucose and by this mechanism our insulin basically controls and decreases the amount of glucose found inside the blood plasma because more glucose travels into the cell and so the concentration of glucose inside the plasma inside the blood decreases. Now, in this lecture, we're going to focus on two important abnormalities with respect to glucose and insulin. So we're going to discuss hypoglycemia as well as hyperglycemia. So let's begin by defining what hypoglycemia is. So hypoglycemia is basically the abnormal concentration, so abnormally low concentration of glucose inside our blood. So hypo simply means a low amount of and glycemia refers to our glucose. So hypoglycemia means a low concentration of glucose inside our blood. Now what exactly causes a low concentration of glucose inside our blood? Well, one reason might be because of the overstimulation of the beta cells. So if the beta cells of the pancreas are overstimulated, that means they will produce too much insulin. And if we have too much insulin inside our bloodstream, that means too much of the glucose will be transported into our cell and that will lower the concentration of glucose below the normal and the concentration of glucose inside the blood that is characteristic of hypoglycemia is 70 milligrams per deciliter or below. Now, another reason might be because we fast, we don't eat for a very long period of time. So if we don't eat for a long time, the cells of our body will use up the majority of the glucose in our blood to produce ATP to use it for energy and that can lower the concentration of glucose inside our blood and that will ultimately lead to hypoglycemia. Now, hypoglycemia can be very dangerous because our brain, for example, uses glucose as the main energy source. So if we don't have enough glucose inside our blood, that can basically damage our brain cells because the brain cannot use glucose if there is no glucose inside our blood. So let's move on to the second type of abnormality known as hyperglycemia. So hyperglycemia is the opposite of hypoglycemia in the sense that hyper means we have a very high concentration of glucose inside our blood.
Now, how exactly does this actually come about? How do we obtain a high concentration of glucose inside our blood? Well, let's imagine that our beta cells, for one reason or another, aren't able to produce enough insulin. And that means we have a low amount of insulin inside our blood. And so if we don't have enough insulin, not too many of those glucose molecules will be transported into the cells uh, from our blood plasma and that will basically create a hyperglycemia condition so the condition of a high concentration of glucose inside our blood now another reason might be because our insulin is in is unable to actually bind to the protein receptor and if the interaction between the insulin and the receptor isn't good that means our glucose molecules cannot move into our cells and so that will basically create a high concentration of glucose inside our blood plasma so once again, hyperglycemia is an abnormally high concentration of glucose in our body, in our blood system. This can result due to the inability of the beta cells of the pancreas to actually produce an ample amount of insulin or it can also be due to the inability of the insulin to actually bind to the protein receptor on the target cell membrane. In fact, people that have a consistently high concentration of glucose inside their blood system, people that consistently experience this condition of hyperglycemia are said to have diabetes mellitus. So basically, diabetes comes in two forms, and this depends on the abnormality of the insulin. So we have type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is the less common diabetes, while type 2 is the much, the much more common diabetes. So in people with type 1 diabetes, what happens is their beta cells are destroyed for one reason or another. And because the beta cells are destroyed they lose the ability to produce insulin so they produce very little or no insulin and that means that the glucose levels inside our blood will remain high because if we have no insulin none of the glucose are actually transported into our cells now these individuals must inject regular doses of medical insulin insulin that is produced in the lab and what that basically does is it helps our body maintain a healthy and normal concentration of our glucose now of course the person has to be careful and not inject too much insulin because if too much insulin is injected then that can lead to hypoglycemia now type 1 diabetes so people with type 1 diabetes basically uh, depend on insulin that is manufactured in the lab and that's and that's exactly why type 1 diabetes is also known as insulin dependent diabetes because these individuals depend on regular doses of insulin now why why would our beta cells actually be destroyed well one reason is because of an autoimmune disease so basically in some individuals and this is genetic in some individuals our own immune cells immune system cells actually destroy our beta cells and this can lead to type 1 diabetes now let's move on to the more common diabetes the type 2 diabetes so in people with type 2 diabetes, their insulin receptors on the target cell membrane have, lo have lost their ability to actually bind correctly and associate correctly with the insulin. And this means that even though we have enough beta cells to actually produce enough insulin, and even though we have enough insulin inside our blood plasma, our insulin cannot actually properly bind to the receptors, and this basically means we cannot actually decrease the concentration of glucose inside our blood we can actually transport the glucose back into our cells to convert them into glycogen so this means we'll have a high concentration of glucose inside our blood so 
Uh, this is the more common type of diabetes. It is a result of both genetics as well as environmental factors. And, and by environmental factors, I basically mean the type of diet that you follow. So if you're obese, so if you're overweight, or if you follow a diet that is very high in sugar, you have the chance of basically developing type 2 diabetes. This can lead to type 2 diabetes, and that's, and that's exactly why why this form of diabetes is much more common than type 1 diabetes. Now let's move on to our kidneys. So the question is how exactly does diabetes, how exactly does hyperglycemia, the abnormally high concentration of glucose inside the blood affect our kidneys? Well, under normal conditions, when we have normal concentration of glucose inside the blood, what the kidney does is it basically absorbs all that glucose that is found inside our filtrate. And that means none of the glucose will actually end up in our urine under normal conditions. However, in a person that has diabetes, in a person that has hyperglycemia, because we have such a high concentration of glucose inside our blood, the kidneys cannot actually absorb all that glucose. And what happens is the glucose concentration in the filtrate increases and the glucose concentration in the urine also increases. So we'll find urine, we'll find glucose in our urine. Now, on top of that, what also happens is because we have such a high amount of glucose inside our filtrate, inside our urine, that means we'll have a high concentration of solute inside our urine. And that will increase the osmotic pressure in our filtrate, in our urine. And so uh, less of that water will be absorbed by our body and more of that water will be secreted in our urine and this is known as polyurea. So polyurea is the condition by which these individuals with hyperglycemia secrete excess amounts, excess volumes of urine as a result of the presence of glucose, the extra solute in our filtrate, in our urine. 